Good evening. I'd like to call Monday, September 11, 2023, regularly scheduled uh, Berlin Select Board to order rescheduled from September 4th because of the holiday. Um, with us tonight is, to my right, is Tor Nelson, Acting Town Administrator and Select Board Member, and Joe Staub. I'm Brad Town. With us also is Diane Isabel, our Town Treasurer. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda? To uh, none. Uh, public comment. Hearing none. Uh, select board appointments to the fire department merger steering committee. Mr. Chair, we've received uh, five uh, letters of interest for the steering committee. Uh, Michael Sweeney. Uh, Matthew Romai, Janet Richardson, who's here tonight, Gary Olette, and Nick Garbat Garbashik. Garbachik. Garbachik. I uh, recommend all five for inclusion on the committee. And how many were we looking for for the committee? Seven? Uh, looking for seven, correct. Mm -hmm. So well, well, that does not include the select board member, if we choose to have one on there, and uh, leave some additional opening, and we would, which we would like to, ideally like to see somebody with, uh, from the business community on there. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll make that a motion. Okay. Um, here a second. I'll second. Any further discussion? Um, I did reach out and talk to um, Peter Kelly. Kelly, and I don't know if he really will meet your criteria for business, but he does have a business and he is a town resident as well. Um, so I'm not sure if he's still interested or not. Okay. Anything else on this? Uh, those in favor of the appointments? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, discussion of steering committee expectations. So I've included in your packet um, just some quick questions I have. Um, and this is by you know no means um, comprehensive or or anything uh, that you look at, but just kind of give them some ideas what to start looking for. You know, I guess first of all, you know, should the merger even occur? Um, yes or no? If no, um, you know, what uh, steps can we take uh, to improve the future resiliency of the department, um, including any possible improvements to the stipend program or are you going to take it a step further uh, to an actual type of wage or something like that? I, I think that would be important. Uh, but if the committee feels that the merger is a good idea and should proceed, then you know, a lot of questions about how it will be accomplished. Do we need a charter change and ordinances and policies and all sorts of things like that? So I, I think it's just a, a starting point for the you know, the committee to start looking at, and uh, I'm sure more things will come up uh, as they go along, so. Okay. Yeah, because I think you, you have your policies, you have your town policies, and the department also has policies, and I'm thinking, you know, one's gonna be, a, should adopt one or the other type thing. Because mm -hmm. you have personnel policies of which we currently have here for the town, um, yeah. It'll be a little different matrix, I mean. It will be. Cause, you know, because you're relying so much on volunteers than we do as a town. And um, I guess my biggest yeah. uh, issue I want to maintain is if, you know, we, we stick with the volunteer department or a hybrid department, um, that we recognize and continue the legacy of the volunteers that, that founded this department. And 
I don't want them to be lost if we go to like a hybrid model or, or something. You know, we've talked about some other departments where, you know, they kind of had this hybrid model and they ended up not treating their volunteers well. And that's definitely want to avoid that. We're, we always have been and always will be very dependent on our volunteers. For, very thankful for our volunteers um, and all the hours they put in, the formal training. The, it was almost every Tuesday night you've got something going on. All the calls, they're getting up at 2 in the morning. Um, nights that they got to be up at 7 o'clock to go to work or whatever. I mean, they put a lot of time in and all along throughout the year, I'd like to recognize that and, and maintain that and, and thank them for it. You know, I think one of the things that are, is kind of missing here is, you know, who are they going to be basically answering to? Mm -hmm. and, and for decisions to be made, um, the fire department this cannot necessarily wait two weeks for a select board meeting. Mm -hmm. That, that's, that can be tough in some situations, uh, just to be noted. One of you would think that no matter what your structure would still be to the chief, much like the police department. Right. And you know, somebody who's a... But when, if, if, if it was to become a town entity, yeah. um, you know, and, and purchasing something uh, or maintaining something, um, can't necessarily wait for the approval of the select board two weeks down the road on some things. Yeah. So. Well, funny you mentioned that because the purchasing policy is later on the agenda tonight. I see that. And we may have to. Derek, that may be one of that may be one of the policies we'll have to change in the future again to uh, to accommodate that. Okay. Do you have anything you want to say, Jan? Um, just a question, like, is there an expectation from the board on, like, how often this group is, is going to meet, um, you know, or that kind of thing? I would say leave that up to the committee as far as how often you can get to, together and uh, it's going to be, you know, they are going to have to be public meetings, so they are going to have to be warned and, you know, agenda and, and everything like that. But I can help you with that and put Vince on the hook for when he comes back. Well, I'm, I, one of the easiest ways, I think, is to put a deadline on it, to have a decision by a certain time, and then the committee can uh, meet as often or as, as they deem necessary to meet the deadline. But I'm not... Uh, really in favor of telling the committee that they have to meet every other Monday. Right. You know, as long as the work is done. Okay. So I think in, in that case it would it would be like helpful, you know, for for the board to, to know, you know, those those ex like the expectations of, you know, should it occur, you know, the, the, whatever the questions are that need to be answered, like so that, you know, we could have those documented to, and, you know, then, then I think that would help, that would help the committee figure out possibly how often we need to meet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, anything else on the steering committee expectations? That's all I have. Okay. Um, Widow Moses Road driveway. There are some uh, photographs in your packet um, and a couple of emails. Um, Can I pass around some photographs? Sure. sure. Who, uh, can you stick your name for the record, please? My name is Larry Perry. I live on This is Tom Lawson. It's his culvert that uh, they don't seem to want to replace, put back into place. I mean, all the culverts are up there. Uh, what's this one? This is, this is the town culvert that's plugged up. If you want to take it, pass around or something. That was plugged up. This is a picture of it being exposed. 
And when it gets plugged up, it sends all the water down the left-hand side of the road. That's what it did to Tom's culvert. And as you can see, the culverts are sitting across the road on the bank. Uh, once they unplug that culvert, so the water goes, this is, this is below that culvert that plugged up. That's what that did, sending all the water down where that water is supposed to go across the road, down by our neighbors, out toward the woods. Sends it all, and this has happened before. So, so this is looking up the road yep. to Mr. Lawson's driveway. Looking up the road above Lawson. Above. That's looking up okay. toward the culvert. The okay. So we're standing at Mr. Lawson's driveway this and is, looking up the road. Right. This is the town culvert right okay. here. And it's supposed to go across the road and out to the field. Okay. And it failed and did this. And then, of course, it came down and washed my driveway out. Okay. I guess I'm misunderstanding why it wasn't done along with the ones that were done up there. Okay. Or why they weren't done at all. So there are other driveway culverts that were replaced up there? Well, right? not necessarily washed out. I mean, I talked to uh, Al down the road and I said, was your culvert washed out? And he says, it wasn't washed out, but they did have to do some work on the ends, filling in everything. Okay. Uh, and I'm not sure about uh, Rock, the log cabin. Did uh, you guys? You paid for it. The, the landscaping company put it in? Yeah. I was going to ask her about that. Who was that? Uh, uh, Durant. And the, yeah. Durant. Yeah, they do all their stuff. Yeah. But when the reason, the only reason that happened is because the culvert above plugged up instead of taking the water across the road. Took the whole... And it's, it's done that before. Are you Tim? So, okay, so what in your eyes did you see? A lot of wood, woods debris come out of the woods from up above there and plug that culvert off at the head. The culvert was perfectly in fine condition as far as water going through it. But there was logs and sticks and leaves and everything else that came down out of the woods and plugged the head of the culvert. Same as it was everywhere. So everybody that was involved in that that day knew how much water was coming out of everywhere. So, it, I mean, it's not the only one in town. We had numerous culverts that were full of logs and sticks. Everything that came out of the woods was just shoved into the culverts. And then everything downstream from that was either gravel or eight inch ditch and stone. And then it just, and once one goes, it's just a domino effect. What size is it? Did we replace that culvert up on top? It is top? now. Okay. It's a 30-inch culvert in there now. See what was that? it? An 18. An 18 crossing the road. That's FEMA standard. It was 18. Can I just add that I've been up there for 25 years, and this road has washed out numerous times. Four or five, I don't know. It could have been more. And I have never touched my driveway. The 25 years I've been out there and every time it's washed out, I have never touched my driveway. Town has always fixed it. Always. And you know, if they only had an 18 and then there, they'd, even if I'd gone out and cleaned the logs and things out of the woods, it probably wasn't big enough to handle it. So now they've put in a 30. So is, is there a standard for driveways 18 inch? Yep, minimum. Mm -hmm. And we had an 18 going across the road. Well, it depends on water flow. It's also a trickle um, most times of the year. Is it not? There's hardly any water that comes out of there on a normal, normal year, right? Barely yeah. any water. Maybe a six inch. But this has happened maybe before. A six inch stream. You also have to realize, I wasn't here before. <clears throat> what happened before, I don't know any history of or anything like that. So, okay, now that you you're here, the rules change. I don't get my driveway fixed after a flood. All I know is our policy states that we don't fix driveways and driveway culverts that were brought up. I follow what I have for rules. You right. said that you were going to come here and do this. Right. And I said if they say, or anybody yep. above me says that right. to go, 
we will be there. Okay, so and, uh, I'll turn to you guys. My rebuttal is, is we haven't done any other ones that work prevalent for us to get by to fix their own above there. We didn't, you know what I mean? But none of them are washed out like this one is? No. No. Did you or did you not say that those were not my culverts, they're private culverts? No, those, what, the ones across the road? Yeah. Those are your culverts. They were halfway down the road. And, and who do they back up? Who do they belong to? You. They came I never out of your driveway in. culvert. I never put them in. See, because you weren't here, so you don't know. <laughs> well, they're still your driveway culverts. Like, it's your driveway, it's your culvert. It's your responsibility to maintain your driveway. We have a policy in place. I don't know if anybody has a copy of that policy, but... Yeah, nothing I got, just to let you all know. So have we filed with them yet, or have you, well, let me rephrase it, have you had any conversations with me yet? Uh, mm -hmm. They'd like you no. to cover it, or... Didn't think we were going to have to about this. Right. We thought by the town to take care of it. And I think you still have time to file it's with FEMA. It's counting down quick, but yeah, I would recommend going that way. So maybe you could use Tomorrow's these photos to FEMA to show them what the... I mean, so that's what I've heard. If you're going to one. apply to FEMA, you want to have photographs. Correct. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, but I know it's, I spoke with the gentleman below there, the, uh, what's his name, the like French guy? Durant. Mark. Mark. Mark Durant. Yeah. Yeah, I mean he he repaired his. Yeah, he doesn't that, let that anybody do him, anything for him. That cost him fourteen thousand dollars. Well, did. yeah, he had uh, that landscaping outfit out of Burlington. It's going to cost him fourteen thousand dollars. They did the lawn the same I time. I fell down. over when he told me yeah. how much they paid for that to be done. Yeah, they're all expensive. That was so his choice to hire those people. What's the word here? So we're looking at taxes went up this year. Now we're looking at we got to do a culvert. And well, what I would suggest or recommend is first uh, get a hold of FEMA and uh, see if they can do anything for you. And if they can't, then uh, while you're doing that, we'll take a look into uh, if um, just what the policies are. We'll send you a copy. But, uh, but, but you do understand that even if we do the work, you're going to be our lowest priority. So it's going to be, you know, at this point, November or later before we even get around to it. We've still got 24 roads we need to fix. Those are much more important than one individual driveway. And I don't care about any fuel oil or anything else that needs to be delivered. You've got to understand where you are on the totem pole, yeah. and you are very low. Right. So, you be, you know, I mean, other people are getting the driveways repaired right now. They're not waiting around on the town. Yeah. So if you don't want to wait on the town, I really suggest, you know, you call FEMA as soon as you leave here. I think they're still, I think you can call them 24 hours a day and get working on that. Um, I can't haul it, but I do have filth that can be put in your driveway. You're welcome to it. We're digging up the brook because it's flooding into the field. So we have uh, some brook gravel we're looking to get rid of. I can't sell it because that's the way the state structured the removal. But you can have it. Okay. You just have to figure out some way to truck it. Yep. If you, if you get one-ton trucks, I might even be able to supply a, a skid steer to load it. But. Oh, we got to have a loader too? Oh, I, yeah. like I said, if you, depending on the truck, I, I may be able to load it with oh. a skid steer. Yeah. But um, I need to get it, out of the, get it out of the way so the brook can flow the way it's supposed to. Well, I was thinking maybe we just sell the culvert, seeing as they're ours, and just Fill the hole. <laughs> we don't get water unless the <laughs> covered above plug. So yeah, uh, we don't get a lot of water. You anyway. might get a little. Bit. You have access to your house right now. Yeah, a small path I can fit my car up to, but there's no way I can get emergency vehicles there. Fuel oil. Fuel oil. Whatever. You know. So what do we got to do start a GoFundMe plan. Uh, good to make over. 
it just kills me that I pay taxes to this place. Yeah, I would. Well, that's one thing we all get to do. Yeah, <laughs> fun stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dodge Farm Road acceptance trial period. Uh, I thought Roberta was going to be here tonight. Oh, she's here. Oh, whoa. Oh. <laughs> so this has been going on for a while. Um, and I put in a listing of the process so far. And uh, in March of this year, we started a one year. Uh, I guess you call it a trial process with uh, uh, taking over the town road and figure this was uh, about six months into that year process be a good time just to um, uh, give a status update and see what the next steps will need to be. Um, I know there was some damage to the road in the floods that uh, they're still waiting on to be repaired and um, grading that needs to be done. Um, but other than that, I also included a, uh, on the top, um, a, uh, get hands to them, please. Uh, kind of a listing of the process to go through to lay out and accept the uh, town road. Um, trying to recreate that um, from the record um, to me is, is a little sparse. So, you know, trying to get everything in place for next March, which will be here before we know it. We've got, uh, you know, town meeting in that same time and potential charter change with the options tax. I just don't want anything to, you know, fall through the cracks at that time frame. So trying to put this schedule together as, as what to expect and, and what we need to do uh, moving forward, so. Just out of curiosity, what was the damage to the road in the, in the uh... <laughs> Bless you. Um, probably going up the hill, probably the worst of it was probably what, turn, is that turn three? Yeah, probably the worst of it was probably what, turn, is that turn three? Goes up near the first resident. Yes. And so the, the water Cross the road. It it went down through the corner. It did cross the road, I guess, but it was washing on the outside of that corner. Then you had the buildup of material that was carried down, and then created a uh, fairly large washout, if not crevasse, running down through the the driving portion. Is that right? And that's where. That's how I describe it now. Yeah. And you guys filled that in and fixed that. No, we didn't. You didn't? You guys did? Okay. Today. That's why I wondered what you were talking about. Okay. <laughs> well, it, the material didn't look very familiar for something that we use on the roads. That's why I was going, wow, we should put that. And to further complicate things, um, looks like you're basing this process on an acceptance or reclassification of town highways policy that was drafted back in 2021 but I don't see was ever adopted and the town clerk doesn't have I, I included that at the very end of the of the packet so I was trying to figure out what the differences were. The, well, there's one in red, which is just the one page. Um, I was going to say yours well, is Okay, mine's red. not red anymore, but um, there we go. the one page is, um, where actions completed have been filled in. And then further back, the very last document in that packet is the proposed unadopted 
policy. So the, the right one here. pager, yeah, it says, you know, that uh, Chenet and Associates, you know, did this work, this work, you know, um, and things like that. Um, but um, based on this policy that was never adopted, so I guess my question is, is this policy something we want to move forward with on, on adopting? Or do you remember that it actually has been adopted and just never got recorded? This is not, I wouldn't know about that. I didn't, I didn't see anywhere in the minutes that it had been adopted or, and Rachel didn't have a copy of it in the vault. Um, so, yeah. So we started this process prior to the new Prior to the draft. Prior to the draft. And we had discussion about it and it was agreed that we were going to be grandfathered in because I think us coming forward with the request for the takeover led to a whole discussion and some new ideas or needs or wants. And at that point we said, well, we have already started this process. We have already been in discussion and had preliminary work done, so the board agreed that they would be grandfathered in, but they were going to move forward with their uh, new proposed amendments or whatever, but I don't think, I never heard that it, it was adopted or accepted. I don't remember it. The, and the version we were working off with that we started with was from 2011. Yeah, right. And that would stand to reason that we wouldn't have put a draft or have them follow the draft after the process is started. No. So. But that is, in fact, what you ended up doing, you know, with this 12 month trial period and everything like that. Because um, the previous policy didn't, didn't call for that. You know, you accepted it and you meant went on from there. Well, the 12 month policy, that's state. I'm pretty sure that was, uh, that was in the state ranks on, on uh, taking over a uh, private road or a road. I know that I was I don't it. remember seeing that in any of the state ranks I looked at. I know it was something that was said about a 12 month, there was um, I can't remember what it was. But I remember, I'm pretty sure that it was mentioned that it was a 12 month, uh, we could, off. if we said adoption, you had, there was 12 months of, uh, of the road being used, and then we had to make up our, we had to take and either accept it or decline it at the end of the 12 months. Used and maintained. Yeah. I can't remember where, I, where, where that came from. Hmm. But that was accepted by the association, right? The, the, the 12 month trial period. We got no problem with that. Okay. Yeah. So. But, I mean, the road, if the road, did the, if the road held up in this last flood storm, I mean, I, granted, let me ask you this, Tim, is that road any better or any worse than any other town road? No, and I think. I think the only reason that problem occurred is, is that um, that one culvert that was ditched past, remember when we did the walkthrough? They, had, they ditched right past the inlet. Um, that's above the house, above Rachel's. Second. Yeah, Rachel's house and then that other house, and there's a culvert just above there. Just one above Lance's driveway. Is that, there's a culvert, there's a cross there, and it was 
they did straight past it. They cleaned, I don't know why or how they did it, but they cleaned the bottom end out and then ditched past the, the inlet. And you know what I mean? So that entails that the only cross pipe on that side is the one below Rachel's driveway. So that gets the entire flow side of that hill from the cul-de-sac to Rachel's. And I, I feel that if that one was open, there would have been a would have half, been a of the, half of the water that went down there. Yeah. Yeah. But that's probably the only reason that that did what that did, is that culvert didn't take it all. So that's easily fixable? Yeah, just have to find the other end of it. But and there's there's still a burn. Swell that. Yep. And so the water can go Cross. into the but I think it's just above the second, the second resident on the right is still a berm on the edge of the shoulder, not allowing the water to, to make its way to the ditch. I don't know if you, you saw that when you went up I the I haven't been up there recently. Okay. Doesn't mean the greater, but. But I think if you put that grader up there and did those shoulders up through the whole width of the road, it, it would be in better shape than it is now. Yeah. At some point, we'll probably get there. So I think we're on track. Um, To finalize the uh, acceptance of the road, um, we do have a statutory requirement to complete this within or uh, issue our findings and acceptance within 60 days of the public hearing and inspection. Since we did not meet that from the last inspection, which was October of 22, we will need to redo that. Um, which means we're going to be doing a site visit at the end of February in the snow or if we did it April, if we did for April 1st and had the paperwork ready for April 1st, would that be acceptable? Winters in Vermont. You never know what's going to happen. You know, <laughs> it might, it might be three feet of snow that day, or it might be 90 degrees. You don't know. <laughs> um, and it doesn't have to be a real in-depth site visit, but you know, you, you've already done that. But for a matter of going through the steps, we do need to, you know, to do the inspection and have the public hearing. So I guess my recommendation that I throw out is, is that we plan for that being our, um, April 1st. And, and we do have to warn it, we do have to, we do have to notify the Planning Commission of it, we do have to publish it in the paper and all these other steps. And that we work off that April 1st date and if for some reason we need to change it, we can change it. But, um, I, you know, I'm just, the other thing is, I don't know how long I'm gonna be in this position. And I, I might not make it till 740 or 640 tonight, or I might be here for another 20 years. I don't know. But in, in case I'm not here, I want to have the steps in place. <coughs> Excuse me. That whoever, everything's ready to go, and they can just go with that. Uh, you know, Roberta. You know, I like to plan things. I like to have things thought out in advance. So that's just kind of what I'm doing here with this. I didn't mean to scare anybody. You know that we're bringing it up, um, but I guess we'll proceed with the April first date, and we'll go from there. Because there's also the uh, traffic ordinance we'll need update to, to include the speed limit, stop signs, and stuff. And then we'll have everything ready to go April first, and and we'll be done with this, and it'll be a town road. Be great. Okay. okay. Anything else on this? Okay. Thank you all very much. Uh, Colbert Purchase, Darling and Junction Road. So, uh, Tim had mentioned this at the last meeting, uh, needs two culverts. Um, the anticipated 
Cost was going to be 50000 between the two, uh, so he reached out uh, to a couple of bidders. And uh, see, we get we got to talk about economic development, but yes. uh, we'll talk Thank later. You. Let me know. Okay, sure. Um, and Tim Sun's checking is basically all going to be from the same contractor anyway, so off the state bid or state contract. Um, so I guess. Tim, what is your recommendation? So yeah, I reached out to a couple different people. Turned out that you know, we buy most all our color from Johnson Hardware. They're the best price that we can get around here for what we use. I reached out to them, got a price. That was what somewhat of the original price was. Um, and then you guys asked for some extra pricing, so I called. Tried to get a hold of a company in New York. They returned my phone calls. Uh, I got a hold of a company out of New Hampshire. I spoke with him in the end of last week and then again this morning. It turns out that's where the pipe's coming from, from Johnson Hardware. And it's the same price. So between the two of them, they docked it out. So it's the same price and they're gonna not charge us freight. They're gonna drop the shipping charges of it because of the business that we do at Johnson Hardware and because it's kind of one and the same it's coming out of a company out of the company in New Hampshire is the broker for the company in Massachusetts that does the pipe large diameter pipe so and that's where Johnson Hardware is so it's all going to come from the same it's the same pipe coming from the same company so both places are the same price and I talked with both of them today and they said that they would not charge the shipping price that haven't shipped up here. So um, a rough estimate now um, with 100 feet of pipe and the bands that go with it, uh, it's just shy of 35,000. What size is that? Is that pipe? 30s? 83 by 57, seven foot height, but it's a squash plate. It's 83 inches across the bottom, like a seven foot, 57 inches tall. Where on Junction Road is that going? Uh, just past Bartlett Hill, so that culvert collapsed during the flood. One end's round, the other one's. And that's a six foot pipe on there. It's maybe two foot on one end, the other end collapsed in. Mm -hmm. The other one was down at the bottom, which yeah. is a five footer. Right there, but Mr. Fair's trailer. So it caused it to wash out. Yeah. So I'm, so I would uh, recommendation on this motion to purchase. I believe we purchase from Johnson Hardware in, accord, in accordance with the state contract. Your second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, DRS RF loan resolution adoption uh, of our system. Previously, the town had applied for and received funding for a water system asset management plan. Uh, this was similar to the uh, Wastewater asset management plan that was completed uh, this past spring. Um, this would be on the water system. Uh, the town's received a grant for $37,950 uh, from the state revolving fund. And I've got the resolution paperwork to adopt it and move that we adopt such uh, paperwork. 
Do you have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, Police Department expungement request. So, um, another, let me try to be polite here. Um, grand idea from the state legislature. Am I doing a good job so far? I'm not sure where it's going to end up. But right. So far. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that a multitude of previous violations, arrests, and convictions can now be expunged uh, from the police record and uh, Tom's receiving a multitude of these requests, uh, about a dozen, 10 to 12 a day, uh, with current backlog of about 300 of these expungement requests, uh, creating a, quite a bit of a backlog. Um, it's... Um, Maybe just for a little clarification, so when we get an expungement request uh, from the state, that means we have to go back through our files in our system and wait out any record of that case. Um, that includes going into our computer system, going into our fingerprint and photo files, uh, any hard copies we might have, all that has to be cleared out and uh, wait like it never happened. Um, so sometimes it's a simple thing, you know, if it's a one page affidavit that happened. 15 years ago when there was no paperwork. It's not a difficult process. Uh, Bonnie was working a case, Bonnie, our admin, does all the expungements for us. She was working a case that had eight, nine different affidavits that's associated with it, with the accompanying data inside the computer. So we're looking at a, a three or four hour process just to do that one, one expungement. Um, so we can vary anywhere from 20 minutes to three or four hours. And we're getting 30 or 40 expungement requests a week. And this is on top of all the other phone calls and, and the normal questions. people coming in and stuff. So uh, Chief and I thought that was a good idea to let her dedicate some time to it. And uh, if she wants to come in on overtime on a Saturday and do it, um, you know, I told him that's fine. I don't want in any way. To me, this is the lowest priority type thing, but you know, some of these are coming from a judge. We kind of don't like to upset judges too much. Um, even though I think this is a uh, stupid. <laughs> Tell us how you feel. Um, I'm still being polite, Dave. Um, process from the state and um, you know, they're pushing it down our throats with no funding or support or anything like that. Um, if I said so it's totally volunteer, I'm not. I'm not asking her to do this on her weekend, but if she wants to come in and do it on weekends and overtime, I'm perfectly fine with that. It, and it's not just us. Not all police agencies are facing the same problem. Some have made a specific person that that's all they do. That's their job full time. Is there an expectation to have these cleared up by a certain? Something for a turnaround time. We can notice that I don't want to be the test case for drop well, No, I get it. So we try to be at least do our due diligence to maintain the semblance that we're keeping up with it. Well, I guess probably a motion to approve overtime for. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Is any of the stuff that they're working on, is that something you wouldn't hire somebody to work with her as a temporary? Um, right now she's managing, but you know, it's a possibility that we have to look at that. Okay. I guess the concern would be she knows the system, she knows the file, so she can... There's right. quite a bit to um, if, if you don't have any experience in Valcor, Spillman, you know, you, got, you would have that learning curve on top of it. If you find somebody who's retired from that type of position, they might be 
easier to step in. And they have to be vetted. They have to go through the background check. Yeah. That could be some, somebody, like you say, who's already kind of in the game and knows everything. Ideally, <laughs> those are hard to find. Yeah. But you don't see an end to these coming in? These no, but I, I don't know what the motivation is, the drive to begin with, so I can't speak to what the grand plan is. There's definitely not going to be an end. Maybe we'll catch up to our current arrest. Because <laughs> everybody gets a clean state slate on the board. Um, mm -hmm. Any other comments on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, Lover's Lane Bridge Local and Regional Input Questionnaire. So the state, uh, thank you, Chief, thank you. has um, sent us a questionnaire uh, regarding the project the Lover's Lane Bridge. Fine after all these years. Um, I included a copy of this in the packet, uh, I'll let you look over. I've also sent this to the Planning Commission and to uh, Bob Warnock, who is our uh, Regional Planning Transportation Advisory Committee member uh, for their input on this. So I'll maybe I'll let you take a look at this and at our next meeting uh, record any thoughts you have on this. Okay. Uh, purchasing policy review and adoption of DPS required additions. Uh, so the uh, chief has identified some potential um, state funding uh, for the uh, body camera purchase we recently did, um, and and that's filtering federal dollars down to us in the town. Um, and part of that process, they looked at our purchasing and also our conflict of interest uh, policies. And the state felt it did not meet the federal requirements uh, for receiving federal funds. So using the, uh, we can probably combine both of these agenda items and, into one. Uh, so made uh, from the VLCT, uh, model policies incorporating the uh, required federal language into both of these documents. Um, the other thing really done in the purchasing policy is increased the threshold for the sealed bids from the current $5,000 mark to $10,000. It's been $5,000 for probably at least 10 years, if not even longer, and just in the course of inflation and everything else, it's probably time to bump that up. Um, so I, I do recommend approval of both of these policies, and um, I will make that motion to approve the purchasing policy and the policy regarding conflicts of interest and ethical conduct for the town of Berlin as presented. Second. Any other discussion on this? I only had one thing and I forgot to talk to him about it today was in there I don't know if it makes a difference or not but it's technically not my job title normal but my job title is highway superintendent I don't know if that changes anything because it says foreman so superintendent, I okay. don't know. That was my only question was, is that, does that, will that cause a problem somewhere down the line? Only if you want to buy something. <laughs> so I amend my motion to amend uh, job title to super, to uh, superintendent. You have a second? Second. Any other discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Are you voting? I have to. Okay. We're good to this. It's gotta, it's gotta be a three zero vote to pass. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
or through anything but the past. Yeah. Uh, town meeting special appropriations application review. So uh, Rachel came up with this. Um, I include a copy in your packet. Um, she's receiving some calls and, and inquires already about the town meeting appropriations and um, didn't feel that it went quite as smoothly last year as we would like with the uh, you know new people and everything. So she's come up with this. Uh, handout that uh, we can send to all the uh, potential um, organizations seeking funding that basically states our policy and the process to send in a request uh, if it's this level funded from the previous year or if they're needing uh, to go the uh, petition route and that uh, have this ready to go. Uh, for this coming town meeting. So what was Rachel looking here to change? Uh, nothing's being changed in the process. Yeah. It's just it's just this cover letter, uh, laying everything out the you know the dates and yep. the process for everything. It's just an information sheet. Yep. Okay. No, action. no actions needed on that. Uh, approval licenses, permits, vouchers, applications. Do you have the scripture? Uh, yeah, somewhere. Here it is. Go ahead. Yeah, you're on a roll. Oh, it's fine. You're on a roll. I move to approve payroll warrant 2405 for payroll from August 13th, 2023 to August 26th. 2023 paid on August 30th, 2023 in the amount of $61,945.45. Payroll warrant 2406 for payroll from August 27th through September 9th, 2023 paid on September 13th, 2023 in the amount of $60,253.76. Payable warrant 24G05 with checks 23292 to 23343 for payables in the amount of $166,755.76 and the general journal entries for August 2023. Your second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Approval of minutes. Uh, you've got one set from set. August 21st, 2023. Um, I sent a new copy out this is, morning. Is this, the, is this the new one? The revised? Yes. Okay. Um, double checked. Um, Yes. Yeah. So just a few minor changes from what was sent out last week. So I'll make a motion to approve the Monday, August 21st minutes as presented. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Round table. Joe? Um, I have nothing. Tour? Uh, be meeting later on this week. Uh, I've got some ideas. I want to shoot around a little bit on capital budgeting. 
Uh, I think that's a piece that we need to work on and it will tell our story for the upcoming options tax. Um, so more on that will be coming. I uh, also have some ideas, as you heard, for economic development that uh, I'd like to talk about first on the website before we go to the Economic Development Committee now. Okay. Um, executive session. I move that we enter executive session for personnel for the treasurer position in accordance with 1 VSA 313A3. Second. Motion carries. We are in executive session.